So, so would you would you guys say that albums now in 2020 just just they don't matter anyway? That, that's why I feel like I've got it from David. Just boom. Nah, I just feel like they're not they're not following the new template. Like I think I was talking to you about it. Like mm-hmm. most people can give them a template for an album that has a beginning with a very like you know serious song talking about a serious topic or a very airy kind of vibe. Now, nah, like nowadays, the first song has to be a banger. Because the listeners' ears have completely changed. It's crazy. The first song has to literally set the tone. Has to be, maybe even the first two, and then the last song will be the most catchy one. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So it keeps you like keeps you wanting to play again and maybe go back to the top. It's it's very weird. That whole maybe sh- storytelling thing isn't that needed anymore. Because t- in in today, like most times, when an artist tells me today that oh. I'm putting out an album. I'm gonna tell this story or that story, and they create a fake story in their head, and they, um, you know, they say it's been my most personal album today. Yeah. I'm not really getting those vibes. There are hits there, but I'm not really getting those vibes. It's kind of like, oh, uh, whatever. So, think about it. Yeah, in 2020 now, yeah, in almost every Thursday, almost like five albums come out, <laughs> and these five people you want to listen to. Actually, these five people. Yeah. So the first song you play, you're thinking, oh, man, it's getting a bit boring. Even though track five is the craziest song I've ever heard, yeah. they might even, they might think of track five differently because of the way it started off. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So I just that's how that's how I think about it. No, so no, no. and obviously the songs have to be shorter these days, like two twenty, yeah, two forty-five. Yeah. For example, like how do you listen to Megan The Stallion's album? I can't do. Exactly. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel. I actually feel like pop stars shouldn't make albums. It's a good point. It's a very good point. As, especially in Nine. Like, I'm not looking for an album from David, Techno, because, bruh, let's give us singles, man. Like, this has always been a single driven market. At least, man. like, a five track EP with bangers. You know what I mean? Even all that EP, EP, I feel like <laughs> if you're trying to get into like EP or album mode, yeah, a lot of them always have crews or labels. Let's get that from them. I want to see David May or Quan Perez do a joint EP3 of them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. I want to see... Do you understand? I'd rather have that than to be looking forward to a David album every year. Okay, so when you say pop stars, you mean local or globally? Because if... if... Even just both. Even both. Like, for real, for real, bro. Like, I'm not even... I'm not even trying to be funny, but, like, Taylor Swift, like, the biggest pop stars. How yeah, many times like... do you really even remember their albums? Or how many times do you even listen yeah, to it? Fine, like, unless you're, like... like Bro, like they have a fan base though, like high key. Yeah, they have a fan. I feel like they have a fan base for sure. Yeah, but like, like Ariana Grande, for example, like jumps in. She has a fan base that's going to listen to every song word for word and go to the concerts and chant the whole P. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But like for me, it's like dropping ten songs a year and dropping one album a year. What's the difference? Um, I feel like it's just. It's, I think it's like a. The pride or ego thing, just want to judge you amongst the because you still get to perform all these songs, you still yeah, be building your catalog. Whether thing. you have someone that has two albums full of 10 songs or someone that has 20 singles, it's basically the same yeah. thing. But, so I don't but know. It, may, it may also be like, cheaper, though. Yeah, like when you drop the album, it's easier for you to kind of gauge what the fans want. Do you know what I mean? But previously, I would say like the whole point of dropping an album was to get a message out to tell a story, which is why. You know, like I'll just obviously because of the recent verses. Let me just say, Young Jeezy. I remember when yeah. um, 101 came out. I know what that was like listening to it. Um, yeah, you know his journey, and then when he gets to recession, I'll say like that's like Jeezy's peak. Yeah, you know, recession. Everybody broke. You know that was. I remember like that's one of the first times I heard the word our oh, recession when the recession. And for now, you know, is it eight years later, whatever, to come back with the recession too. If you followed mm-hmm. your and you know that when you're listening to Jeezy it's all about like you know mo- like even if you're not a dog do you know what I mean like motivation so the initial thing was usually to tell a story I mean for me anyway and yeah put a message across in a cohesive you know that's why niggas love the Omatic like they study Omatic in is it Harvard or something yeah so, but that's what I was asking earlier like what what does an album represent now like so that's think- the thing man because now yeah yeah go on now, because of this whole streaming thing, a playlist can be used as an album. <laughs> Fair. 
you could just literally just put 10 songs together as an album yeah put it on itunes right. for sale and just an album so you choose your, carry on. if you choose your route in terms of like okay i want to be a 10 single a yearly artist like in terms of like okay, yeah you still have to get these awards you still have to get these accolades that are still going to propel you to work with better people or at least get you people coming to you in terms of we know what you can provide. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, like, let's say if you're just doing yeah. 10, you're only limited to certain award categories. Do you know what I'm saying? 100%. 100%. Yeah. You know what I'm so, you still want to, like, I feel like, yeah, you can still do the 10 single, but, like, still, like, at least got to give them one album or maybe, like, five singles in a year, then one album. Yeah. So, like, at least expand your chances of reaching every single, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I get what you mean. I like the point you made about playlists because when I deep it, bro, I haven't really like enjoyed any Drake project um since Take Care, like mixtape comeback album after yeah. Take. Everything else to me was just like a bunch of songs. I pick what I want and keep it moving. Of course, it's that's, how, I, that's how it is with Drake at, at all times. But so yeah. like, it's more it's more 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 online, as if it's like the greatest project and sliced bread. That's what they always do. I don't get it. Every time Drake drops an album, everyone says it's a classic. And it's never a classic. Albums are never cohesive. The Alternative Network.